but look at the toughness. He's bouncing off defenders. He's able to turn this into a 33-yard gain. You see the resiliency, the determination. He's not going to give in after the catch. What's up, Browns fans? Welcome to episode five of the Browns Breakdown. Nathan Zagura alongside the Athletics Draft Analyst, Dane Brugler. And Dane, we're now on to the day three picks of the Cleveland Browns. And the first one, tight end Harrison Bryant won the award for the top tight end in the nation, something that had never been done by a player outside of a Power Five conference. And I can tell you this, the Browns went into this draft with very little intention of drafting a tight end. But when they saw Bryant on the board there in the fourth round, they said this is too good of a football player to pass up, and they made the selection. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that uh, that tight end wasn't a, a prime target, but yeah, with Bryant there, I, I don't blame him. Uh, he was number eighty-five on my on my overall board, so pretty surprised he fell out of top one hundred picks, and I'm I'm sure the Browns were as well. So you know, first up, let's highlight what Bryant does best, and that's catching the football. So uh, you know, when you evaluate prospects naturally. You want to see the tapes versus the toughest opponents, and that's especially true with players from Group of Five programs. So when evaluators saw Ohio State on that Florida Atlantic schedule, that, that was a must-watch uh, when you check out Harrison Bryant. And so that's what this place uh, play is against the Buckeyes. All 32 teams saw this. You could see uh, Harrison Bryant. He's lined up here in the slot, top of the screen, matched up one-on-one -on -one versus the Buckeyes defensive back. And you could tell right away that he's got a little bit of space to work. And so as we roll it, uses a little bit of hesitation uh, in his route here where, you know, he can set it up a little bit. Uh, there we see a little bit of hesitation there. That outside stem is important there because he's going to run the vertical. He's going to stack the DB vertically. But that little bit of hesitation to the inside allows him to do it. So that athleticism within the route is such a big, important part of what Harrison Bryant does. It gives him a little bit of an edge there. And then we could see here at the finish, look at him go up and catch the ball over the defensive back. Bryant does an excellent draw, tracking the football, using his hands uh, to finish over top of the defender, finishing it to the ground. Not many tight ends had a 25-yard uh, catch, uh, passing play against Ohio State uh, defense this year. Bryant was one of the few. And I think if we even look at the end zone view, we can see how just how impressive this catch was, making it over the defensive back. Uh, over the Ohio State safety, strong hands, focus, and then finish. Just a, a big-time play uh, against a really good opponent. Yeah, that's one of the plays that, as you said, stood out to evaluators. They watch us won six catches, 79 yards in this game against the Buckeyes. And Harrison Bryant said, this was a real important one for me. Started the game off, I think he had a drop early and just rebounded from that and, and had a, a very nice game there in some plays where he lined up against the Cuda and was able to make some catches over a thousand yards receiving last year as a tight end in college. That's something that hadn't happened in quite a while. I think what he had to go back to Jay Samaro was the last one who did it, Dane. Is that right? Uh, Texas Tech, all right. Yeah, so it's been a while. So Harrison Bryant, very impressive. And you see there the ability to high point and also to get open. What else did you like about Harrison Bryant? Well, you know, I, really the yeah, route athleticism, that that's really, I think, the main selling point with Bryant. And we can see it here again. He's in the slot, bottom of the screen. And the Marshall safety is giving him just a little bit more respect when you talk about that vertical speed uh, by playing that off coverage. And so this allows Bryant to really show off that route athleticism, but just in a different way. So he runs the route here to proper depth. And that's a big, important part of that. Gives him a little bit of wiggle room at, for that wide comeback route. Uh, working back towards the sideline, and he makes the catch right at the sticks to move the chains. I think the biggest takeaway, you see it right there, that route break. Very, no waste in motion there. He's very clean with his footwork. The transition is very clean, coordinated. Uh, and that ability to get in and out of his break, that really creates that separation where the safety is not able to close in time where he's able to make a play on the ball. And I think the depth of the route is also important here because it gives Bryant a little bit of wiggle room where he can work back towards the ball a little bit. And he still is at the sticks, moving the chains. Uh, this is just, this is a player that understands the route depth. He understands how to run uh, this type of route and the athleticism allows him to keep that separation from the safety defense there's nothing they can do with a play like this uh big time play by the tight end moving the chains 
And what also stands out after watching these two is just his ability to catch the football. Big catch radius, very good hands. As you mentioned here, he had to kind of get extended, bring that one in on the sideline for the first down. We saw the great catch against Ohio State as well. He's a guy who can line up in the slot. And imagine in, in the Browns offense with this, a lot of two tight end looks, he'll be more in line, but using those skills as a receiver, much the way that Minnesota last year used rookie Irv Smith Jr. in that offense who had a productive season. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And there was one more passing play I wanted to highlight uh, with Bryant because, you know, we've talked about his vertical ability. We've talked about the ball skills, the route athleticism. But I think that after the catch skills or something else that he can be that he can bring to the field, uh, it could be an asset with his toughness, his athletic gifts. And so this is just a simple slant against UTSA. It, it should be a minimal gain here. Uh, he's at the top of the screen in a slot. Uh, and this is something where it should be a minimal gain, should be, uh, you know, a five yard gain here. But look at the toughness. He's bouncing off defenders. He's able to turn this into a 33 yard gain. You see the resiliency, the determination. He's not going to give in after the catch. And so I know that this is UTSA. I get it. NFL defenders, they're going to be much better tacklers than this. But Bryant, he's more than just a possession guy. So I think that is an important part of what he offers as a pass catcher. Yeah, he's shown two chunk plays here. One with the route and the catch down the field against Ohio State and here a little run after the catch. And I'll tell you, watching him, he just moves very naturally. And I think that's something you want, obviously, out of what you'd call a move tight end or in this offense, the guy who's kind of that second tight end who can catch the football. But Look, Baker Mayfield, the Browns last year didn't utilize the tight ends enough. They obviously had the injury to Njoku in week two. They bring in Austin Hooper, who catches everything. And now you've got Harrison Bryant. Njoku is back. And you've got Steven Carlson, who they like as well. That's a pretty good tight end room. And that's going to be a big part of this offense, which is can be a quarterback's best friend. Love the competition they have at that position. Bringing in Hooper, obviously, he's going to be the main guy. But then, okay, what can Harrison Bryant do to maybe light a fire under Njoku? And, you know, is he going to be able to compete and get on the field? And in what situations? I think it's going to be a really fun competition to watch early in this in the season when we get to camp and then get into preseason. But then throughout the season, as Harrison Bryant grows and improves. And I think the lastly we have to talk about with Bryant is as a blocker. Uh, I, you know, he's an outstanding pass catcher. We've, we've uh, seen that with what he can do down the field. But – I think what made him uh, such an uh, an impressive player on tape is that he can block. And at 6'5", 245, he doesn't look like much, you know, as a blocker, as an inline player. And his arm length, he's only 30 and a half inch arms, so he doesn't have that ideal length or the ideal power where he's just going to overwhelm defenders. So he's not a bully, but he, I think he knows that. He understands what his strengths are, leverage technique and he can do just enough to keep defenders occupied and going back to that Ohio State game here he is lined up in line uh, to the left of the screen he's going up against 265 pound defensive end Zach Harrison who has a very bright future ahead of him uh, with the Buckeyes Harrison is over 20 pounds on Bryant here so there's no debate who the stronger player is but watch as the play uh, gets going here Bryant stay square at the point of attack look at him stay square extends and then look at him ride him around the quarterback protecting the integrity of the pocket so in a situation like this he really should be outmatched because Harrison is a much stronger player but I, just look at the stubbornness that he brings with his hands he understands how to the timing of the play and uses that momentum of the defender to work away from the quarterback so I, I don't think there's any question Bryant He's going to earn his paycheck uh, by catching the football, but he blocks with attitude. And I think it's kind of ironic. Usually tight ends, they put on weight and they outgrow the position, becoming offensive tackles. Bryant did the opposite. He was initially an offensive tackle in high school. They moved him to tight end as a senior. So blocking, it wasn't a foreign concept to him when he got to FAU. And I think that shows on the tape. Absolutely. And look, this is this is – a tight end winning one-on-one -on -one with a defensive end that allows for a big play for the offense. And we know in this scheme, we call it the Shanahan Kubiak scheme. We'll call it the Stefanski scheme. There are times when they will ask a tight end to maintain one of the edges in pass protection as part of the deception and the things that they utilize. Uh, and so that's something that you don't want to count on a lot, but it is something that he will be called to do from time to time. And you pointed out his background as a tackle. He looked pretty comfortable here. And this is, this is one that I'm sure the evaluators looked at and said, oh, okay, that's pretty impressive. We know you can run. We know you can catch. We know you can do all those things. But this is a pretty impressive piece of tape here for Harrison Bryant. 
Yeah, and I love the word choice that you just used, saying maintain the edge. He doesn't have to overwhelm the edge. He doesn't have to bully on the edge. He doesn't have to, you know, win with outstanding power. He just has to maintain it. He has to clean, keep the pocket clean, maintain the integrity of the pocket, and, and he does that here with leverage, with his technique, and just with that stubborn attitude that he brings as a blocker. Well, I know this, Dane. A couple people, certainly in our division that I've talked to, personnel people said that they felt, couldn't believe Brian was on the board and were very unhappy that the Browns were the team that went and snagged him, knowing the system that the Browns are running. So this is one that when you talk to Andrew Barry, you talk to Kevin Stefanski, as I did after the draft, said, what was the one pick that got you the most excited? Obviously, they love Wills. They love getting him at 10. They love Delpit. But they said, man, when we got Harrison Bryant in the fourth, we could not believe it. So thrilled to have him here. You see why on the tape is this is another addition. A good one, I think. This is one to remember, folks, because Harrison Bryant, that's a name you don't want to forget of the Browns breakdown. We'll continue with the Browns day three prospects coming up. 